Second thinning differs from first thinning because all the trees to be removed are individually selected. So it's even more important to get the right thinning decision, to remove the right tree at the right time, at the right volume. But it has to be done sustainably, environmentally and economically. So let's see what you need to do to get the best outcome from second thinning. Thin on time. Our Sitka spruce grows fast. We thin every three to four years. Have a look at the racks in, in your forests. If you see the crowns across the rack beginning to touch, competition is setting in, so you need to thin. If we thin on time, we can keep that fast growth and fattening of those trees continuing uninterrupted. You need to know how your forest is growing, so you need to measure your trees. Diameters, heights, stocking rate. This provides powerful inventory information to assist with your thinning decisions. It also gives owners control and power with future decision making and timber sales. A system of thinning control protects your forest against the negative impacts of overcutting and undercutting while maximizing timber production and promoting best thinning practice. This is a healthy forest habitat. The birds are singing and second thinning will encourage more plants and animals to make the forest their home. Protecting the forest during thinning is a top priority guided by the principles of sustainable forest management. Growing large, top quality, high value logs to final harvest is what most forest owners strive to achieve and it's what the industry wants. Many factors can influence final log quality, but we can control one of those major factors, how well we thin the forest. To wrap up, second thinning succeeds with good decisions, good timing and good execution. Get it right, you and your forest and the environment are the winners.